A very good evening. Welcome to State of Business on our television. I'm Ashing Sani Veera Singh. Let's have a look at the headlines for today. Commission report on Sri Lankan catering to be presented to the Parliament. Tourism Minister is confident of passing the 2 million tourist arrivals. News in detail. The Cabinet of Ministers approved the proposal presented by President Maithripala Sirisena to present in Parliament the report of Presidential Commission appointed to investigate alleged irregularities at Sri Lankan Airlines, Sri Lankan Catering and Mihin Lanka. Cabinet of Ministers also approved several other proposals which had been forwarded by the Ministers. Report of the Presidential Commission appointed to investigate alleged irregularities at Sri Lankan Airlines, Sri Lankan Catering and Mihin Lanka Private Limited from the 1st of January 2006 to the 31st of January 2018 will be presented in Parliament as proposed by President Maithripala Sirisena. The Cabinet Office also announced that the report will then be forwarded to the Attorney General for legal action to be taken as per the recommendations therein. The Cabinet of Ministers also approved the proposal presented by Minister of Finance Mangal Samravira to amend several acts including BAT and NBT. Accordingly, draft bills for revising Valivada Tax No. 14 of 2002, Nation Building Act No. 9 of 2009, Economic Service Charge Act No. 13 of 2006, Inland Revenue Act No. 24 of 2017, Finance Act and Betting and Gaming Levy Act No. 40 of 1988 will be selected for necessary amendments. The Cabinet of Ministers also approved the proposal presented by Finance Minister Mangal Samarvira to sign the exchange papers with the Government of Japan for obtaining the grant aids of 1 billion Japanese yen provided as an instant reaction for the Easter Sunday attack. The 1 billion Japanese yen grant will be utilized to enhance public security and counter-terrorism activities under non-project Japanese grant assistance for the current year. Minister of Tourism Development, Wildlife and Christian Religious Affairs John Amarthunga states that tourist arrivals will pass the estimated 2 million target at the end of the year if the current peaceful and positive recovery trajectory continues. Addressing a press briefing today morning in Colombo, Minister thus shed light on the current developments of the tourist industry. So that uh, during the next 4-5 months, by the end of the year, our estimated uh, arrivals would go over 2 million. If all goes well, I hope there will be no further disruptions. As it is, there cannot be anything. The armed forces are, and the police are guaranteeing that. So, therefore, the industry won't lose anything very much. Our packages have been metered out for the couple of months that the hoteliers, travel agents, tour operators suffered by the banks and the finance companies. They have done their bit of extension of their sympathies to the hoteliers and the other people and given them concessions. Addressing the same press briefing, Chairman of Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority, Johan Jairatna, went on to clear some misconceptions related to visa-free exemption. I just want to uh, uh, make a very clear clarification of what this uh, visa fee exemption is all about. There is some confusion out there with the travelling public and uh, the reason for this particular press briefing is to clear this confusion out. It has been misconstrued that uh, the free visa has a connotation of the, uh, no visa required coming into Sri Lanka. So that's the first uh, thing that we need to correct. What it is, is a visa fee exemption. Having said that, the application process and the ETA online application process will go on as always. So that will lend itself to the uh, confusion about the security of uh, the country with uh, the arriving uh, uh, tourists. So the, the process remains the same. The only thing that has been negated for the next six months is the fee that is charged for visas. But the process remains the same, I repeat. Noting that Colombo Port City Infrastructure Development is to be completed by mid-2020, the Assistant General Manager of Czech Port City Colombo Private Limited, Simon Tham, assures that Colombo Port City Infrastructure Development, which is the single largest foreign direct investment project in Sri Lanka, will transform the future of condominium living in Sri Lanka to a great extent. He made these claims addressing a seminar on future of condominium living in Sri Lanka organized by the Chamber of Construction Industry Sri Lanka in Colombo last week. 
Simon Tham elaborated that this project will have a significant social economic impact on Sri Lanka, creating a world-class city for the South Asian region. Sri Lanka is in a strategic position on maritime Silk Road and the port city is an investment that comes under Chinese government's Belt and Road Initiative. The port city offers an ideal platform not only for Sri Lankans, also for the international community to benefit from the global market transformation significantly, Tham further said. At the meantime, Megapolis and Western Development Minister Patli Champikaranavaka vested the Colombo port city area with the Urban Development Authority in line with the Urban Development Act with effect from last week. Accordingly, all development activities in the port city land will be subjected to regulations and the supervision of the Urban Development Authority. Earlier, Parliament approved the inclusion of the port city as part of the Colombo Administrative District. Stay tuned for more news after this short break. Welcome back after the break. The first phase of the project for the Bogambar Cultural Park was kicked off on the 24th of August 2019 at the site of the Bogambar Prison Complex DRE development under the patronage of Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe. Accordingly, the project will offer tangible benefits to the country and especially to the city of Kandy since it includes an open-air theatre, studio for traditional arts and crafts, a tourist information centre and multiple recreational areas. The project will also create a positive impact on the lives of the residents of Kandy by producing new employment opportunities while creating avenues for trade, tourism and investment. To develop the Bogambar Cultural Park, the government of Sri Lanka in 2013 transferred the inmates to a new prison complex in Pallikale and that decision was made to conserve the buildings concerning the archaeological and historical value. The plan for the project and design redevelopment was established by the Ministry of National Policies and Economic Affairs on 9 December 2016 and will be implemented by the Ministry of Development Strategies and International Trade Ministry of Megapolis and Western Development, Urban Development Authority, Central Engineering Services Limited and Board of Investment of Sri Lanka under the guidance and supervision of the Department of Archaeology. Addressing the event, Prime Minister Rani Vikramasinghe stated that the government wants to develop the city of Kandy, including the Bogambara Cultural Complex, in the same way as the Gaul Fort, Trincomalee and Anuradhapura were developed into areas of cultural interest, allowing for growing tourist arrivals into the country. As per the reports of a Treasury official, the government has distributed loans amounting to 91 billion rupees under its major development program, Enterprise Sri Lanka, over the last two years. Moreover, a significant portion of loans has been allocated under the Jaya Isura category, which is meant for entrepreneurs and small and medium sector enterprises, and the total loans issued under this category in August amounted to 56 billion rupees. The Enterprise Sri Lanka Loan Scheme was launched as a mechanism to support creating 100,000 entrepreneurs in Sri Lanka by 2020. Accordingly, loans under Run Aswanna, which is targeted at agriculture-based programs, amounted to 21 billion rupees. The official further added that the Enterprise Sri Lanka Loan is progressing well and the banks have also supported the scheme in a great way by initiating promotional programs to encourage youth to create new enterprises. State Finance Minister Iran Vikramaratna told a recent meeting that Enterprise Sri Lanka will be an ideal platform to create a conducive environment with fair and equal opportunities for the promising local entrepreneurs to contribute to the country's development. So far, several major exhibitions have been held in places as far as Mondragala and Anuradhapura where rural youth got the exposure and the opportunity to create their own ventures. The third Enterprise Sri Lanka National Exhibition, organized by the Ministry of Finance to promote entrepreneurs, will be held in Jaffna from September 7th to 10th. The exhibition will also raise awareness among public on the implementation of the interest subsidized loan scheme, Enterprise Sri Lanka and other similar programs and there will be a wide array of trade stalls where the public will be able to purchase goods at subsidized prices. 
The Construct 2019 exhibition accommodated by National Construction Association of Sri Lanka under the theme of Build Smart, Live Smart took place for the 19th consecutive year from August 23rd to 25th at BMICH. There were about 250 trade stalls and among them were foreign stalls from countries such as China, Malaysia, Singapore and India. Thus, this three-day event was Sri Lanka's largest construction industry-related exhibition showcasing building materials, building services and construction equipment among a wide range of other standardized services. Addressing the inauguration of the 19th edition of the Construct 2019 exhibition, Chairman of National Construction Association of Sri Lanka, Susanta Leona Rachi highlighted that smart construction means building design, constructing and operating through collaborative partnerships to make full use of digital technologies and industrialized manufacturing techniques in order to improve productivity, minimize cost, improve sustainability and maximize user benefits. Leonara Chu went on to state that the exhibition was highly focused on the segmentation and specifically focused on consumer needs. Sri Lanka will receive 150 million US dollars aid from Asian Development Bank to improve urban living conditions via a water project next year as urbanization grows rapidly straining infrastructure. The project covering South Asian cities aims to improve urban infrastructure, water supply, wastewater and sewerage. The ADB said that between 2010 and 2015, South Asian nations like Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Maldives and Nepal urbanized at an average annual rate of 1.8%, which is double the world average of 0.9%. The ADB further said the project pipeline for the five countries in 2019 to 2022 is estimated to include up to 20 new loan approvals with a combined loan amount of up to $2.6 billion. These aim to fill critical infrastructure lapses and respond to the demands of client governments and of ADB's strategy 2030 toward making cities more livable and embedding innovations in projects. Stay tuned for stock updates after this short break. Welcome back after the break. Trading at Colombo Stock Exchange ended on a positive note today. The All Share Price Index gained 1.99 points to close at 5,910.92 and the S&P SL20 gained 7.11 points to close at 2,928.7. The turnover was 657 million rupees and over 32 million shares were traded. Up next are Forex rates. That's all the news for today. Join us tomorrow at the same time. Until then, take care. Good night.